quite a series of power tips throughout this deck. And um, this deck is for all of you online. I know from blog will download it online at, at a URL later on this evening. Um, make sure you've got it above the font. Don't be ambiguous. And a lot of you, and one of the, one of the problems is graphic designers love things to be the same. They want the email icon to look like the ISS icon. And it's got to be pretty. I, I love pretty. I actually don't follow my own advice, and that's what I have to say. Um, so, as yeah, I say, I'm going to do. Um, I'm such a parrot, right? So, but the, problem, the thing is, you've got to work with your designers to accommodate a subscription mechanism that is zero click, non scroll, that is consistent, consistent from a graphics design perspective with the rest of your site. Okay? The more friction you add, the less effective it's going to be. Um, this last line here is I know there are some services out there who will say, well, do you want to use your opt in? Do you not? Okay? Only choose. Confirm dual opt-in with a capture to prove that you're not spamming people. Single opt-in, passive opt-in, doesn't work. Okay? If you want to have a great reputation and not be able to spam them, make darn sure you know they're human and absolutely get them to confirm before you send them anything at all. It's essential. Subscribe to your own mailings. Please. You know, I know you just wrote it and you're probably sick to death of that post, you sweat a blood over, but please. Subscribe to your mailing because you know what? If you get that email and you think, oh, oh, then what do you think your readers are thinking? Right? Subscribe to your own mailings. If you don't like it, fix it. Okay? Social media cross promotion. Yeah, have forward to a friend in your email because you want to have your emails work to get you more email subscribers. And yes, have a retweet this. A share with Facebook icon inside your mail. That's obvious and a no brainer. What you also need to be doing on Facebook is get your email service providers subscribe app and put it on your Facebook page. Every Facebook visitor you have to your page is a potential subscriber. Ask for the subscription. Don't rely on them clicking through to your website and then finding the mystery icon. Yeah? Okay. Every single post you put on Facebook should in fact ask for a subscription. Do you like this? Subscribe. Why not? Why not? Okay. Think. Don't tweet without a link. Right? Or I'm all for like, don't tweet unless you're going to put something of value or resource there for somebody to click through and find out. 140 characters is not much. Right? Always tweet with a link. Make it relevant and ask for a subscription on every single page. Also, if your blog, if you're a corporate marketer, your blog is maybe a subset of a larger corporate site. Okay, ask for subscriptions on every page of your website, not just the blog. Right? People are coming from Google, you've got a product page and a, uh, a customer service page and an industry page and then, oh yeah, the blog's over there. Right? Ask for subscriptions to the blog on the product page with your collateral. Okay. The other thing I see that bloggers sometimes do is have more than one subscription form on their page. No. Now I don't know which one I have to fill in. I have exactly one email subscription form in a sense for one service on the form. It could be the same service here and here, right? We don't have like a field over here and a constant contact over there. Because now I what, what's the difference between e blog subscriptions and the newsletter? I'm confused. What, what do I do? Oh, well, forget it. Right? You make them think you lose them. Okay? Okay, back there? Yeah. All right, all right. Let me just make sure you're all in. This is full info. Presentations is a full contact sport. All right. I cannot overstate this. If you do nothing else from today, add an incentive to your blog. Well, to, to your, not to your blog, thank you. To, to your email subscription. Reward subscribers. Or, in a sense, <coughs> potentially reward your subscribers for joining the list. If you have a monthly drawing for a 50 buck Amex card, that's appropriate. Right? Or they get half an hour of your time if you're pro serve, if, you're, if your business is consulting, or a free site audit. Whatever something is that is relevant to your readership and has value, give your new subscribers the chance to win it. A week, a month, a quarter, whatever time frame works. Okay? It's incredibly effective. It can raise your subscription rates 100%, 200% if you have a relevant offer which they can um, enter for. Okay? It is the best thing that you can do, short of having your subscription form above the phone on the right to be visible and ambiguous. Okay? I'm going to sound like a broken record. Oh, fuck. All right? I've got your track. Um, OK. 
Okay. The other thing you can do is with, once, you, once you've delivered that reward, either through an autoresponder or a very effective landing page, once you've completed the opt-in process, keep that autoresponder going. I'm going to get to this some more. So reward people for staying on the list. So don't make it a 100 buck gift card for new subscribers. Give everybody a shot. Give them a reason, a reason to hang around beyond your beautiful content. Con uh, content. You know, it's, it's, yes, it's a math tax. It's like the lottery. You're spending 100 bucks for one subscriber, but you've got all these thousands joining your list. Right? Because they know that if they don't join the list, there is absolutely zero chance of their winning the money. But hey, like New York lottery, you never know. So there's that mentality. They will try it. It is effective. It works. Here's a really good one. Um, I'm going to use money saving model a couple of times. Look where that subscription form is. It's above her freaking banner. Right? She has subsumed her brand to the email subscription form, and she, her audience is through Vermont. She's giving them money. That's a great fit in terms of the incentive. It's a great position to perform. Um, when she enters it, when you enter this, you go straight to the point where you prove you're a human being, bang, bang, off you go. Okay. Before she started this, she has a big list with us right now. Her list is growing at a few thousand a month. It's now growing several thousand more per month, entirely down to this subscription. It costs her 100 bucks. That's one hell of an effective marketing tool, right? It's a fraction of a penny per new subscriber. Um, again, one of those, do as I say, not as I do moments, I forgot to bring a standard form for this. So, um, oops. <laughs> uh, you know, I need to do something. Um, However, if you want to scan the QR code, hence it will work. Um, so, you know, figure out ways to bring the offline world online. If you're running local seminars, events, meetups, you're doing something for the local club, um, social media club, whatever you're going to do, bring something that brings those readers online. So, you know, a sign-up form is a basic one. Have them click a QR code if you're in a sophisticated part of the world where most people have smartphones, right? There have been great sessions on mobile at this conference. This is the way forward. You can get fancier with this. You can brand the damn things. Um, I was walking around yesterday. I will be tomorrow with a QR code on my back. You know, scan me. Please, yeah. It, it's it's a And if you do, by the way, you'll get a, there's a spiff for you if you do actually go to the link on the QR code. So I'm going to pitch that for you. Um, but it's a great way to do it. Think out of the box here. Just keep them simple. Keep them scannable. Don't make them huge. Um, very effective. You know, I wish this were a reference to the new Pirates Curve, probably could be a movie, but it's not. Um, do not mail people without their permission. Do not become a spammer. Spam. One email sent to one person who did not give you their explicit permission makes you a spammer. Permission has to be explicitly granted at the time of opt-in. You can't bury it in a terms of service page, right? Say, oh, by the way, if you give us your email address for this, you're in. Uh, 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 uh. Checkbox. Yeah, okay, default the checkbox to be on if you want to, but give them the chance to leave the list. The last thing you want is complaints, the ISPs notice, and we'll get to blacklisting shortly. You cannot do this. Um, <clears throat> you've got multiple sites, maybe, or you want to have multiple sites that you're working with. You cannot move somebody from site A to site B. It's not content they signed up for. Don't do it. Right? So if you're a um, JQ knitting needle, and Crochet Corner is your website. And on the other side of the fence, you're in the dark, you are a heavy metal diva. Right? You can't bring people from Crochet over to heavy metal, right? It's just, it's just because you happen to run both sites. This content is not relevant. You're breaking the part of the rule. Relevance, permission, timeliness. Don't do it. Your boss says, hey, I've got a bully on the board of his company. He's going to let us access their email list. I, 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 I don't know. Can't do it. Can't do it. Um, and not from your, and then, no, certainly not from anybody who runs anything that you're married to or related to. Um, okay, we're going to pause for questions. So don't buy those lists that. Oh, God, thank you. The question is should I buy or should I use those lists that are circulating where you get millions of addresses for just 20 bucks from the internet? No. They're hundreds. They're full, no, no, they are full of what are called spam traps. It is the fastest way to get blacklisted on the planet. Right? Only names that you know have given you the permission to mail. So if, there, if it is very relevant, it's still a no? Yes, so the question really is, even if my content is relevant, can I mail somebody um, without their permission? No. 
I, I, I will go to my grave saying no to that one. Um, I, you know what, I'm gonna, let, let's move on because I've got a lot of slides to get to and we'll do some questions on, on permission and other later. It, but it's really, you, I'll tell you something, favorites, come here, you know, we're smaller than one of the other, many of the other services like that. I am brutal on best practice with this service. We do not let you opt out of dual opt-in, we do not let you opt out of captures. We require permission, we require proof, okay? As a result, I have great deliverability. I can get your email into the inbox, okay? And we will not waver of those standards because my business's reputation depends on our ability to enforce them. Because, what I, because whatever you use to do your email, job one is to get the email from you to that $100 subscriber's inbox. And if you can't do that, you fail. Right? That's, that's basic. You've got to get through all those filters and servers and blacklists and that. You can't get to the inbox. It's no good to you. Okay. Oh. If I actually agree to share my contact information with you on LinkedIn, that does not give you the right to mass mail me about your latest venture. I'll be off that. I'll be done with you if you do that for me. Right? Don't become an anti-social networker. Okay? It's really important. LinkedIn is not a personal CRM system. LinkedIn is a way to be social on a professional basis with your connections. Okay? It is not a free email marketing list where you, get, where you avoid all that nasty opt-in stuff. Okay? The way to keep in touch with people on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is through status updates. That's what they're for. By all means, put a status update on that says, I am now with Megacorp. We have great products and Acme sucks. By all means, put that on LinkedIn, right? But don't use LinkedIn's mass mail feature to mail, to mail me that an effective newsletter and say, oh, if you don't like this, please unsubscribe. No, I haven't given you permission to do that if I share contact information with you on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever comes next. Ready? There we go. I keep referencing people's books. I apologize if I'm really sad about this. It's just, you know, <laughs> that I do. Um, it's really important that once you get that email to the inbox that they actually engage with it, they open it, they do what you want them to do. They take you through some tips to actually um, help you with that. There are three reader types, for example. There are the, there are the detailed folks who will take your email, open it, and go through it. Bye, 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 bye. Right. Love those people? Awesome. Okay, nobody else. You know, very few people do that. Most people are scanners. They'll read the headline, the opening sentence, and they'll, maybe they'll scroll and decide whether to actually commit to reading the rest. There are visual readers, right? People who get excited about images in their emails. So put at least an image in. Uh, repetition works. I'm going to talk a lot about permission, timeliness, okay? It's because repetition does work in that. I want you to leave today knowing that I've got to change the check the position of my form on my site and not spam people because I need permission. 